Hey, this is Robert. We're gonna go over some stretches and compression using a foam roll for upper back and shoulder pain in addition to some neck work. It's a part of a series. This is also on Amazon. You can click the link at the top of the description to go there. You can use these on a floor, on a yoga mat on the ground, on a massage table, or even on a bed. If you don't have a foam roll, you could use rolled up towels, but these are particularly firm, which we want for this. It's gonna isolate areas of the upper back we're trying to work on. You're gonna use these following along to give yourself some relief for upper back, neck, and shoulder pain. I wanted to cover a bit of the anatomy we are going to be using in this video and show body positioning. As we're using this foam roll, these are firm. She is gonna have this primarily in her upper back along the shoulder blades across this way. It's going to allow her to back bend. And in addition, if it's uncomfortable on her neck, she's gonna wind up putting a pillow behind her head. We're gonna show this. I just wanted to make sure that you understood some of the body positioning. As Karina is on the the foam roll, she's gonna be able to roll gently up or down and select the portion of her upper back and neck she wants to press on. She may be leaning to the right, may be leaning to the left, but because this tool is big and broad, it should not be painful. If you find that it is, if you find that the back bend is too intense, you're gonna to have to put pillows on either side. Just make sure to go slow. It can be intense, but it should never be painful. So to go ahead and start, we're going to have Karina gently sit up so that we can place the foam roll on the ground or on the table. She wants to roll her shoulder blades onto it. And in her case, I think, sit up a little bit more for me. Let me roll a little bit lower. Try from there. Now, you can put your hands behind your head. She can pull her feet a little bit closer into her bottom. And slowly, if it feels comfortable to her, she can almost start to lift her bottom so that she can begin to back bend over the roller. Too much? It's pretty intense. Okay. She's exploring her range of motion. Pretty intense? Yeah. Okay, so do you want a little more back Ooh. here, a little more support? Um, I guess so. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> so one, let me give you one pillow. We'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah. There we go. So if, if she's rolled forward, we're trying to reverse that curve lightly to lengthen her spine, but we want her to feel comfortable. The other thing is I wouldn't want her neck to be overly lengthened, which is why we use the pillow. If she decides that she needs another, I would just have her lift her head and I would slide another pillow in. I can use a towel, I can use a blanket, I can double, triple up, but she's still getting some opening through the chest. She placed her hands in a position that would lead me to believe that she's comfortable there. And how do you feel with the length through the pec and the pec major? It feels really good. I can there. Just, yeah. Yep. She, on, on her own, she went ahead and started moving her hands, which is what I was going to move her towards. She can go full superwoman with her hands up above her head. She can reach out wide and do the Y from the YMCA. She can put her arms by the side. If she decides she wants some more support, I can even put pillows underneath her arms on either side. I think of this as the yogic lazy boy. I'm trying to put her in a position where she can open her chest. All day long, when I work on people who have upper back and neck pain, nine times out of 10, Part of what they're dealing with is they have a tight pectoralis and a tight pec minor. And what that means is the muscles are pulling our shoulder blades forward. If I hold this position, it immediately feels uncomfortable on my upper back and it feels uncomfortable on my neck. 
if I'm able to roll these structures open, it immediately feels much more free. I'm unencumbered. My spine feels long. You'll see the position change that she just did. She rolled the foam roll just a bit higher. Now she's pressing on a different series of vertebra. It's okay to have a little pressure at the posterior part of the spine because this is big and broad. You wouldn't want to use a tennis ball on the center of the spine to be too sharp. What we're trying to do instead of almost violently rolling up and down, rolling up and down, rolling up and down, is we're using the foam roll as a yoga prop to open the chest. How's the neck there, Karina? Okay. I want you to just lift your head a little bit for me. I'm going to place another pillow. I just want to see how this feels and give me feedback because I don't want as much length on the neck. How's that? Does it still feel like you're getting enough back bend? Yeah, I'm mean, going <clears throat> higher up. Okay. So where the foam roll presses, awesome, right? Now, where the neck is, is that feel like it puts your neck in a more comfortable position. If I had her in the original position, she would probably start to feel a bit of strain in the front of her neck, which is not really what I'm looking for. I'm wanting the piece of her spine that's on the foam roll to lengthen and open. This is opening the ribs, opening the rib cage, lengthening pectoralis and pec minor. She can put her hands wherever she wants. She can put the arms wide so that it's on the foam roll. She can put her arms up and above, bent at the elbow. She can put her hands behind her head. Wherever feels good to her because she's searching through her own body. When she put her arms up, she gave me a ooh. Because you felt a little bit more pressure on the foam roll. There you go. Yeah, just more openness. Mm-hmm. Really good stretch. Once she's in a comfortable position with her arms, I'm going to invite her to do something to change the position slightly on her cervical spine. When we sit at a desk and at a computer, nine times out of 10 people jut their chin forward. What I'm gonna do is reverse that and bring her awareness to the junction between her cervical spine and her neck and her upper back. I'm gonna have her tuck her chin and press the back of her head into the pillow. She's now contracting muscles that pull her head in that are typically in most people weak because we have this jutted out chin forward posture. She can repeat that three to five seconds, contracting and pulling back and then relaxing. And she can play with the tuck of her chin and moving the head and neck to achieve a stretch on the area that she wants. You'll see that she naturally, without me even saying anything, decided, hey, I want to turn my head to the side. That is what I'm working towards. I've worked with Karina enough sh that she understands the basic guidelines to be able to safely work on herself. She's changed her arm position to make herself more comfortable, to open her rib cage. And very quickly as they tune in, I think to myself, is this massage and body work? Is it yoga? Is it yoga therapy? And I think that it's really a combination of all of those things. Because the goal I always had was to help people. And the way that I would help them is by working on them and finding tension. And once I could help them relieve that, how could I show them how to work on themselves? After this 30 so, or minute so video, Karina is going to feel taller. And the reason she's going to feel taller is because her rib cage now is open. The intercostals are lengthening. She's able to pull more air into her rib cage. And it's reversing that slouched forward posture people have nearly all day long when they sit and stand. We're lengthening tight muscles that are a little bit more difficult to access. I, as a male body worker, 
had a distinct challenge because if Karina came in as a client and did not know me, I had learned enough to know that the chest was where I needed to work. And the problem was, working on female clients, I had to be aware of breast tissue and in intimacy concerns to be able to help that area open, which is why some of this developed out of my practice. Her head and neck look comfortable. Her arms look comfortable. How you doing, Karina? Do you want to move higher or lower on the back? A little bit higher? Okay. So she wants to try higher. She's going to support her head and neck. It looks like she's going to maybe lift her hips and roll. In her case, she sat up. And when you try to lift it up this way, so you tell me where. And I can take one of these pillows out. She's shifting her body on the foam roll, just trying to find how much pressure. If she put her weight into her feet and lifted her hips, it would mean that there's more weight on the roll, but it depends on how much pressure she wants. Sometimes when I have them lift hips, it's so they can gently roll up and down to find the spot that they want. If you find that the pillow needs to move, you can just lift your hands above your head just to shift the position slightly. Just to give her a change of pace, just to shift thinking about how body mechanics influences what's going on here, I'd like her to pull her knees towards her chest and grab with her hands and tell me what the difference is. More pressure on the upper back. And then how's it feel on the lower back? Just feels good. Okay gives her a chance to shift position again. You can tell that if I didn't have her on the pillow, her head would be back too far. She wanted to counter stretch and forward bend. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pillow out and when she's ready, she's gonna come back. But this time, instead of the foam roll being on her back, we're gonna have it dead square underneath her cervical curve. She's gonna rest her neck over this foam roll. As she comes back, there she go. Now, she can move the foam roll slightly, even on the cervical spine, higher or lower, depending on the sort of pressure that she wants. And you have a good half inch or half foot, like above the foam roll here. How's the pressure just on the neck there? Okay, feels good because she's applying pressure to the cervical paraspinals. She has muscles along the neck related to the neck itself and then also trapezius, levator scapula that go from the top of the shoulder blade and insert right into the base of the skull. Quite naturally, she started moving her head side to side. Karina told me while we were off camera that she had a little headache yesterday. Lots of people are having headaches and headache pain that I believe may be related to tension in neck muscles. We use them constantly to move our head and neck around, but how often do we receive pressure into those muscles to bring awareness to then have nerves stop sending a signal to contract? In other words, we have low level tension almost all the time. It's why so many Americans like yoga and it's why so many of us like massage because we're fighting chronic tension patterns. As she turns her head from side to side, she's able to press through those layers of muscle. In this case, on her left side at the base of the skull, if her eyes were open, they would probably be rolling back in her head because it feels so good to get sustained, broad pressure that's safe. It's not pointy like an elbow. 
This is big. This is broad. She can massage herself by going slowly, by rolling the head and neck side to side. Then over time, she will learn. Just like we had her tuck her chin and press the back of the head into the pillow, we can have her do the same thing into the foam roll. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be just a small amount of pressure, that little bit of chin tuck. She can press in the center. She can press to the side. She's addressing many muscles all at the same time. Semispinalis capitis. Trapezius, levator scapula, and at the very base of the skull, I believe C1 and C2, the first two cervical vertebra, attached to the suboccipitals. The occiput is a bone at the base of the skull that attaches those muscles to C1 and C2. She's changed the head and neck position again. Now, this boulder of a head is now weight pressing down on the foam roll so that she can do self-massage. The line between yoga and my massage practice continues to break down. And by showing this to clients, I'm able to empower them to work on themselves, to give themselves relief. If I work on Karina, I can access these same areas. I can make her aware of them. And then I give her a foam roll and I show her how to work on herself. And this 10 minutes after a session that I show her how to work on her neck is probably one of the most valuable parts of the whole session because she can do this five minutes a day, every day of the week. And if she does that with regularity, neck tension tends to dissipate. And I find that muscular imbalances tend to improve because she's relaxing tight muscle, which gives weak muscle a chance to come in and begin the strengthening process. Pressure is good, Karina. Do you want more? Mm -hmm. More pressure. Okay. <laughs> she was saying that she doesn't think she can take any more. If she was going to apply more pressure, this is more advanced. It's something that you want to build up to. I really honor the fact that she says, "Hey, this is intense. I don't think I could take more." If you're following along at home, what I would have you do is your neck is pressing into the foam roll, you'd begin to lift. Your, your heels would be closer to your bottom and you'd begin, you don't have to do this, Karina, I'm just walking them through it. You would lift your torso up and essentially what happens is the only part of your body making contact with the foam roll is the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're able to gently you know, change position, lifting the body so that there's more pressure on this guy. She's starting right where it works for her. Let's say even this. Let's go backwards and say this is too much pressure. You would fold a towel over the foam roll. It's going to dampen the pressure. It will make it more broad and you will be able to hang out there longer. One thing I will caution about is if you work on your upper back using this foam roll with pillows, do not fall asleep. You do not want to see how sore you are going to be when you wake up an hour later because we lengthened all those muscles for an hour, like holding a stretch in yoga. Karina likes this back and forth pressure as she's stimulating the skin and nerves. 
The foam roll at this stage feels like a pillow because it's supporting the head and neck, but she's able to apply pressure into the muscles of her neck. And the good thing about this is the foam roll never gets tired. Have you ever had a massage therapist work on you and it felt like they got 10% of the way in and had to stop because their hands hurt? This she can literally do once she builds up familiarity for 30 minutes at a time. She can give herself an upper back and neck massage for 30 to 40 minutes safely and all you have to pay for is a foam roll. Is it right at the base of the skull? Mm hmm. Now, as you press into that area, do you feel referred pain into your head at all? Where on the right side? Big and broad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it big and broad kind of around the temple? Yeah. Okay. Very common referred pain pattern. I was just getting feedback because she had said she had a headache. It's very common for people to press into muscles related to the neck and start to feel referred pain into the head, sometimes very big and broad, sometimes more pointed and sharp, maybe along the temples, up around the ear. I wanted to mention that because I don't want you to be afraid if you experience that. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. The science at this stage leads me to believe that trigger points are potentially something having something to do with nerve pathways. So as we stimulate a specific muscle, it refers pain to a different area of the body. Karina's been working on the cervical spine. She kind of got tired of working in the upper back. We had her in this big back bend. She's got a little bit more collapsed posture because we just used the foam roll as a pillow to massage the neck. What we're now gonna do is work back into the upper back again. And I'm gonna have her slowly lift up. And we're gonna roll the the foam roll just about shoulder blade height and then slowly she's going to tell me where she wants to go to. We can transition back to using a pillow. We're just trying to pick the part of her spine that she wants to lengthen and press into. There you go. Using her hands to support the head and neck gives her more control over the roll so that she doesn't overextend the muscles in her cervical spine. She's moving up and down slightly, just trying to find like, hey, where's the sweet spot? Where's the stretch? Now she's going in the opposite direction, lengthening, but still using the feedback from the roll. And once you get a good sweet spot, we can put the pillow down again if you decide you want it there. So let's try one and see how that goes. There. Okay. Little changes in position. So if this is the foam roll and she's this way or this way, it doesn't particularly matter to me. I don't have a fixed set of guidelines. Normally, you're going to go from general to specific superficial to deep. You're going to build in a progression, but you're going to build in a progression that feels comfortable to her. She's got her arms resting on her abdomen, but she can again play with the hands and arms if she wants to move them wide, if she wants to move them out over the foam roll, if she wants to lift up above. It all depends on what she feels. Also this length through the bicep 
the deltoids, the pec minor, and pec major. The pec minor and pec major in the chest are the big guys. We lengthened those at the beginning. It became too much pressure on our back, and then we used the foam roll as a pillow. Now we've gone back to what we started with, and she gets to do a second pass to figure out what does she want. If she wants more pressure, just like before, she pulls her feet in towards her bottom. She's able to lift her hips up, which means that there's more body weight and pressure on the roller. Gives her a chance to roll up, roll down. If you do this on a table or a bed, just make sure that you're not so far to the edge that the pillows would fall out. Little roll up and down, just from vertebra to vertebra. You're always gonna go with what you feel and you want it to feel safe. You want it to feel secure. Just to give Karina a slight difference, lift your bottom for me. I'm gonna slide a pillow underneath and I want her to see how that feels. Because now we're forming that yoga lazy boy. We're propping her body so that it can open over the foam roll, but in a passive way. If I put Karina on her abdomen and had her do cobra pose to lift and open, that's amazing because she's able to strengthen those back muscles to lift up and open. But if I put her in this position, the propped yoga, she's able to relax, release, and unwind areas that are shortened and tight, that are not as pliable, not as flexible and open. If you can't fully breathe, you can back out ever so little. How was the addition underneath the low back? Good? Do you prefer it with or without? Okay. Changes position as she toggles to one side or the other. She starts to shift again. My students who study with me regularly know this inside and out to the point where I barely even teach anymore because they just come in and work on themselves at the time that we've set up in advance. She's opening the chest and arms, lengthening the deltoids, the pec, the pec minor, the bicep, even out through the fingers and palms. When she talked about it being the best stretch, she said it felt really great through here. The other thing that I would make her aware of is the nerves that go down the arm exit along the cervical spine, along the base of the neck, which means we're having an effect on nerve pathways from the neck down and out the arm to the hand. Many people who are having thoracic outlet carpal tunnel are having problems with that junction between the neck and the arms. To take out that stretch, the pec and pec minor, she crossed her arms. She's slightly changing her position, but she did so in a way that made her feel better. Then slowly, can you roll to one side or the other through the shoulder blades? You can keep the arms crossed if you want. I just wanted you to play to one side or the other, just to get feedback. More on the left side. She's got a little pressure into the rhomboids, which are muscles between the shoulder blades. And also on trapezius, she put her arms comfortably, passively down at her side to be able to rest. She has good, long, slow breathing. 
and again always brings me back. Is it yoga or is it massage? And I say it's both. Because we're just working on her body and giving her tools to be able to unwind her own tension. It's my firm belief that if I could teach this to America, we could have a real effect on the opiate epidemic in our country. She shifted position, the foam rolls in a part of her upper back, but she still got support for her head and neck through the pillow. If it ever starts to feel like too much length in the front of the neck, you can use the pillows to support. You can reposition them just like she did. Karina is in her upper back again. She found that comfortable space that she was breathing and releasing tissue through the upper back and shoulder blades. Her arms are comfortably at her side, so it's not as much stretch on the pec and pec minor. If I have her feet closer to her bottom, she's gonna be able to lift so we can slide this pillow out. That changes some leverage. And as we get closer to exiting, I'm gonna have her go back to the neck again which in this case means I'd probably have her scooch her bottom down just to roll to where her neck is on the foam roll. And I'm slowly gonna take the pillows out. She's using this again as a pillow. It's across the cervical spine. She can place a little pressure into the muscles at the posterior, the back side of the neck. She's naturally, just instinctively, rolling the head side to side, placing pressure in the suboccipitals, trapezius, levator scapula. Those words are just big, fancy anatomical terms. They're just muscles. You could look them up on Google if you needed an anatomy chart. Very easy to work. In the end, it's most important that you feel your way through those tissues. If she decides she wants more pressure, she can tuck her chin, she can press the back of the head down, which I think in her case is enough pressure. We talked about earlier that it's possible to lift your bottom, your torso, so that there's more pressure on the neck, but only do that if you just feel like you need more pressure. It's never supposed to be painful but I do suggest that it have a certain level of intensity because it holds your focus and you're doing Hatha Yoga. You're using the physical as a handle for meditation to draw your attention and focus to that specific area to breathe into it and affect your own nervous system using pressure on skin and skeletal muscle, meaning the muscles that we tell to contract. She can pick the left or the right side and she can position her head and neck to press into the foam roll because she's doing self massage and she is happy to hang out here and deliver some relief to really tight muscles that we use all the time, moving our head and neck around, lots of headache issues, and even people who get things like migraines, they're often going through what feels like tension headaches, just chronic regular headaches and then they get worse into a migraine potentially. Usually clients will explain to me that through a mixture of body work receiving sessions with me and through yoga like this, they're able to decrease the frequency and the severity of headaches or both. Chronic, just tension headaches are the easiest to deal with. If you have chronic migraines, you definitely want to talk to a doctor to see if there are any neurological issues that are factoring into those headaches because they can be much more complex. If it's a tension headache, which is soft tissue in nature, those are easy 
to work with and help reduce the frequency and severity of. She's still going and I'd have her lift her head gently. I'm going to roll the foam roll out and then we're going to have her go back to neutral. Just to rest for a moment, just to see how her head and neck feels. She can mobilize, move around, tuck the chin, just some gentle mobilization. And then in her own time, she would slowly sit up and just make sure that she has her balance before she begins to stand again. Thank you for working with us today. Remember to go slow, breathe, and intense is okay, but no pain. It's an excellent way to work on your neck.